remember I said white light is what? All of the colors that you see. And even you're stimulating all of the colors. When you look at light, or you look, light is a, a wave. Um, we also talk about it being in packets, little sort of a continuous wave. It comes in packets, which we call photons. Okay, but anyway, electromagnetic waves range from gamma and X-rays all the way to infrared radio waves. Now, what makes one wave different from another? This is real easy. I'm going to erase this. Here is a wave. Okay? Don't worry about the lights. Here's another wave. Here's another wave. And how do we distinguish between these three types of waves? You look at the distance, let's say between the peaks. The distance between peaks. And that's one way you can distinguish. Because some waves what, have a what, shorter distance between peaks. I like to teach it that way. Those waves, the shorter the distance, will have what we call a higher frequency. Because if you have a stationary point, more waves will what, go past that point than if the waves are what, very big. And so the, low, the, the smaller the, the <coughs> distance, we're going to say that has a higher frequency, more than well, pass. And we can measure that in something called wavelengths, the distance between our peaks. Wavelengths measured in kilometers. <coughs> very, very small one. Now, when you look at the world, Gamma rays and X rays, the peaks are what? Like this. Really close together. And the closer they are together, they have more energy. So you don't want to stand in front of an X ray beam. Really? Unless you're where? In the dead waters. And what is the dentist supposed to do when they take an X ray? Put on a lead eye apron because the X rays will scatter and you don't want to what? End up having a baby with six heads. Right? You don't want to have you know, damage to your DNA. And gamma rays are even more powerful. They're in outer space. And in the whole spectrum of these waves, there's only one small area where you can see visible light. And that's the wavelength, you know, go up there, between roughly 400 and maybe 650 nanometers distance. You have a very narrow range. Look, I'm going to make you jealous. You ready? You know a bumblebee? Okay. And most insects, they zoom around and they like to pick their flowers. And you go, oh, look, the little bumblebee likes the red flower. The bumblebee says, the hell with you, I'm not looking at the red flower. I don't have color vision. You know what they have? They have ultraviolet vision. And they can detect, just <coughs> they can detect the visible spectrum, red and green, and yellow and blue, they can detect different wavelengths of ultraviolet. So you look at a beautiful flower, and, and you go, oh, look at this flower. It has leaves that are orange, all oh, that sort of thing. And he says, I don't see color. You know what I see? I see this. I see a particular pattern on our leaf that you can't see because they're reflecting on different amounts of ultraviolet. So insects have a very different world. You know what I mean? Very different world. They can really see a whole spectrum, just like you can see a spectrum of lows of all these different colors. They can go to their own lows and see what? A whole spectrum of ultraviolet. So the weakest light is that with the longest distance between the peaks. That's, that, would, that would be 
the 700, and the most powerful would be the 450. You know? Just a little story, because so I'll tell it to you again later, but I didn't tell it to my other class. If you give birth to a baby who has a RH compatibility, or the RH group, even other compatibilities, their blood breaks down. And the hemoglobin, no hemoglobin, leaks out of the blood and it gets changed to bilirubin. Now with a baby, bilirubin is very toxic. You know why? Babies don't have a good blood brain barrier. Remember the blood brain barrier from last time? Remember that? How many did not learn blood brain barrier? You all learned it? Okay. It doesn't develop fully until about a year and a half. So bilirubin, which is toxic, gets to the brain and causes brain damage. You know how you get rid of the bilirubin? You, know, you put them under, you don't have to be rough, you put them under fluorescent. You take the little baby, you give him a pair of sunglasses, oh. it's cool. you lay him on his back, and you, you know, and they got a, what, ultraviolet, a, a, um, it's the far end, close to ultraviolet, the blue end, it's right next to you, there. hits their skin, and penetrates, and breaks down the, 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 the natural. Isn't that the, the mother, isn't that the blood that doesn't, like it's a kind of the, the mother's blood. Oh, wait till the, wait till the, oh, the blood. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's what I, I thought yeah, that it's, what, it's, it's, it's pretty common. Common. It's, it's more complicated than that. <laughs> uh, you're on the right track. Okay. So anyway, uh, rods can pick up what? Any of these wavelengths? But it doesn't give you the image of what? Color. Rods will only tell you black or white. Okay? If you see them, you don't. But the cones, the red cones, will only pick up what? Light around this wavelength, around 650 degrees. The yellow, uh, around 500, and then the blue, 450 degrees. Anyway, you don't have to memorize it. Now comes something that freaks students out. When I look at you, you know what light is hitting you, right? It's being focused through my lens and it's going on to my retina. There's one problem. You know what's being focused on my retina? You upside down and right to left. Look, show me. This is the image you're looking at. Look, the pale blue. It's no longer on the top and on the outside, it's where? On the bottom, on the inside. The yellow is no longer on the outside, it's on the what? Top and inside. You project through your eye the entire world onto your retina, upside down and right to Wow. So my God, how come? I don't see you, what? Upside down. And you know who learns this very quickly? Your brain. And your brain says, you are seeing the world incorrectly. You're not sure how. And the brain takes all of the information and turns you, what? Right side up, correct right to the left. So how can we prove that the brain does this? You get college students. What do college students always need? Money. Money. So you get a group of students, say, we need you for a couple of days, we're going to put you in a special dorm, and we're going to fit you with these special goggles, and the goggles turn the world, what, upside down and right to left. They have special lenses. And they tell them, you know, don't go walking around, you know, they put good mats on the floor, you know, basically they take them very quickly. And after several hours, all of a sudden, they go, ah, oh, the goggles, they say, stop working. The world is what? Okay, it's right side up and it's what? Left and left and right. And they all excited. <coughs> and the researchers come in and said, thank you, you just completed the first half of the experiment. What's the second half? You take the goggles off and they see the whole world upside down and right to left. The brain says, oh God, not again. And so it takes a while and the brain says, okay, I'll fix it. <laughs>